Hey everybody, I'm Rick and welcome to Talk at Habs. So I got together with a few of the Talk at Habs crew and we discussed the Habs 2021 season, a roller coaster of a ride that was both fun and frustrating, exhilarating and heartbreaking. Here's the next in this four part series, 2021 season in review. Check out all four parts, give a thumbs up if you like this video, Leave a comment and subscribe and ring the bell if you're new to the channel and want to see more Habs content. Please enjoy the show. Um, next item would have been uh, who stays, who goes. But I'm going to do another video on that, a separate, totally separate video. So I don't think we're going to touch that on that here. Um, that one's going to be another. We just talked about possible off-season moves. You guys want to talk about any more moves you got? I know. I, I was going. Uh, Duran, I think, has got to be traded. Well, we're gonna get to Duran. Don't worry about uh, that. Uh, okay. Rick. Yeah. To be honest, yes, I honestly believe that if we're gonna get into the off-season, that could be a good separate video because I can see that one definitely being over an hour itself. Because oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I, I don't know about. I was going to touch on it quickly. Yeah, we only, I, only, I barely even put a dent in my notes about the offseason. So yeah, I was going to touch on it quickly. And I think for the moves, offseason moves, and even UFA stuff, I think that should be a separate video too. I'm just going to say this, and it's going to be an unpopular decision, but I say bye-bye, Armia. I don't think he comes back. Not because they don't want him back. I no, I, I agree. I think you might ask for too much. Yeah, okay, but again, that's... Oh, I, I want to get it. I do want to touch that, Jeff, in the not offline. Here. Because... I'm not here now. No. Okay, no. so we're moving on. Um, <laughs> no, because we're getting near the end here. We need to um, No, no, because we're getting near the end, and we're all, we're at the time I wanted to do. Now we'll touch on Jonathan Drew. <laughs> so... Now we're going to touch on Jonathan Drouin. Did I make something for Drouin? Yes, a very clever one. The question of Jonathan Drouin. Um, I think this, it has been, okay, regardless of what the reason is that he took time off on his sabbatical, I'm not going to criticize him for that. I'm not going to even talk about what the rumors are. That's not of interest here. Right. But it doesn't change this fact in my mind. Another season where Jonathan Drouin, at a very important time in their season, let the team down. No matter how you look at it, right? still that. So if I'm the team, I got to look at it like, okay, I, we're, not, we're not bastards. We're going to make sure he's okay with what – I don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. It's not been leaked officially. There's nothing. Right, and speculation. All rumor and speculation. Healthy. And considering it might be a mental health thing of some sort, I'm not going to speculate on what right. it might be. It's very unfair and wrong to do that. Right. No, but but at a year when really they could freaking use this guy. This playmaking. Play. So oh. it just means I think if I'm the team, I'm ready to probably move on the guy. If I can. Unfortunately, so, yes. Uh, so, Question from everybody. Well, for everybody, and we'll start with Jeff. Uh, no, we're in there, Jeff. What do you say? What would you do with John and Drew? If it were, I, you, I, you were I only got, president? I only got two comments about this. He scored two goals, and the rest of it, I have no comment on. Done. We know where he'd go. What do you? What Delaney? You're next. You're next. Au revoir, Mister Drewan. Bye bye. Bon voyage. I'll get rid of him for a seventh round pick. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I know. No, no, no. Listen, maybe I, I would be okay. I'm okay. Leave him unprotected. Kind of hope and pray Seattle takes him. I'm okay with losing him for free that way. That'd probably be if, best case scenario, too, because then we free up like five and a half million dollars. Right. Well, you get that's that's one way. Yeah. Another thing, yeah, if he's still if he's still not okay for whatever it is that's wrong, I'm okay with LTIR for next year. Yeah. Because that helps us. Right. If they're gonna trade him, get as much as you can for him, but don't hold out like oh, you know, like we got a decent yeah. offer, but we want and more. No, take what you can get. I'd also say too. With like all the, the best picks, you can. 
with uh, with all the picks we have, I'd say too, don't try away from maybe sweetening the pot a little bit, just because his contract too. It, like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, with this question of will he play, won't he play? That, that's that's a question. But then no. you look at the money and you go, that's a lot of money for a guy who's kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll money. we'll hold two million. How much would you accept for them to retain on Drew, on Drew? Two or less. I say two million because I think that's what it might take. Yeah, I'd, I'd say two or less. I think yeah, obviously we'd have to take I think at three and a half million, he becomes attractive to a team. Right. But I think anything more, I don't know. I don't think. I'd so, like to say no, no, no not at a three and a half. Future considerations, and we throw in two picks. Yeah. And we get a billion of them. So. And the kitchen sink and whatever's in the fridge. And Jeff. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah, I kind of think, I, you know, the, the sad thing is, I don't think they're going to do it. I never liked the trade. The one kid I didn't want touched, I just witnessed what he could do. That is why <laughs> Romanov shouldn't go anywhere. The sad I don't thing. I want to trade another Russian defenseman. The exactly. Sad thing is, Listen, the sad Got thing one. is the sad thing is this for me. If they don't retain they don't resign to know, they're gonna keep Drew at. Why? The only Better French player on the team. Going He's gonna be the uh, only Quebec first. player on the team. So if they don't resign to know, I think the chances of Drew at leaving are zero. Anybody agree with me or disagree? What do you think? Oh, I I'm think a Drew fan, so I, can't, I got no comment. I'm a, I'm a Drew Ann fan, but I got no comment. Like, look, I, I, you just said two goals. That's all you got to say. Now you're a Drew Ann fan. Uh, but I am a Drew Ann fan. But he, the, the team, the issue with the team is goal scoring, and he scored two goals. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, true. I mean, that, that's true. But he's he's the only French player other than Deneau. And I'll say this. I said this in the chat. I want to see him have the opportunity to play a full season training camp and everything under Duchar. Yeah, this is why I said I don't think they're going to do it. I said I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to give him that year under Duchar. I'm going to be honest. The smartest thing that we can do is bring him back, hope for the best. He either pans out or we can somehow manage to one load him and trick a team into taking that four mil. No, I think the no worst comes to worst, no and he is, can't, we have LTIR. He's got two seasons. He's got the next two seasons under contract. So say he doesn't. It doesn't work out. You trade him at the trading deadline. He becomes attractive because he's only got one year left at that point. And I think he becomes attractive if you retain a couple of million and you're paying three and a half million for the guy. Uh, his value is never going to be lower than it is right now. True. You're not going to get anything for him. So you expose him in the draft. If they take him, they take him. If you don't, then you you hope he can build some back. value next back, season. Yeah, exactly. By the, by the trade deadline, and you move him at the trade deadline when he's only got a year left on his contract, and a t team would probably take a chance on him. I That's can't like believe the last series after last. But I think I, it's I a wasn't big... a fan of Drew and the way he got on in Tampa when we lost Sergev and then his mediocre play and I've never been a big. I'm fan. just done with him and that's like to know. I love to know. Don't get me wrong, but if he wants four mil, I say bye. He's not. He's worth two mil the most. Well, oh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll no, I, I'd be okay with four what? million for Phil Four yeah, million be. Yeah, be fine. I, yeah, four million. I'll go the reverse I think it's on absolutely Perfect. I'm going to go the reverse on Dano. If they move Drouin, they definitely resign Drew uh, Dano because then again they need a French player here. I'd rather so either Deneau. they bring in another French player so, or I don't know. I don't know if Drouin will go. Honestly, all right. So we we figured we all would like to see that either either they give him that chance or like maybe best to hopefully find a way. Now, so last thing, we're going to hit the last thing. So finally, we're near the end. Oh. Um, I want to know from each of you guys, how do you feel by the time the season ended and the playoffs, how do you feel about the job um, Dominic Ducharme did? I'm going to leave Jeff for last because I know that he's got – he's from Nova Scotia. He saw him with the Mooseheads. He's got a little bit more knowledge Not of really. than we do. Well, maybe Not a really. little bit. So I'm going to leave you for last. 
Let's we'll start with Matt. How do you feel about the job he did eventually or overall? So, to be perfectly honest, after so once we took over from Julian, you know the end of, the end of regular season ended, and I really just thought he was just another Julian, just with the way he wasn't really playing a lot of the young guys, and it was more just the same stuff. And you know, then the playoffs come around, and and then they started playing better. I said, okay, well if they get out of the first round, he's probably safe for a year. And then we get to the final. I'm like, all right. He'll be here for two or three. I mean, we'll see what happens. I just, I really, really hope he plays the young guys. Like Ro Romanov, I think needs to be a regular guy. I really do. I, yeah, I think uh, Romanov is, is way too good not to. I don't think he will. Delaney, what do you think of? Uh, what do you think uh, of this? He's job? definitely back next year. He's. Oh yeah. He just definitely deserves it. Uh, oh, one thousand percent. Even with the funky season and the weird playoffs, whatever. He did a good job coming in and deserves without a doubt next year. Matt, you couldn't have been more on the point with the uh, young kids. It's time for young kids. I'd rather see him Bobby. back into the playoff on kids yep. than make a run and lose mm -hmm. in the final when we come up against people with speed and can score goals. I want goal scorers. Yep, I agree. Um, I'm going to go before Jeff, even though he just came back in. I think um, I'm, I'm good with it. I think once Ducharme got the opportunity to install a system that was after the season finished and then before the playoffs, they had the week off, I think he installed it. It took a few games for them to get it. But once they did, there was a big difference in this team. And I liked what I saw. So I think, I liked, I think overall, I'm very happy with Ducharme, as much as I was really not sure he was going to make it at all. And, uh, yeah, so I think he's back, and I'd like to see what he can do with that system and with the young guys. Jeff, what do you think? Uh, um, blooper. Yeah, no. Um, I don't think they should take the interim tag off him yet. Oh, I think it's removed already. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I think once they made the cup final, that was in the trash. Okay, but why do you say that? Yeah, Jeff. I, uh, I usually got you back. The season was such a roller coaster. There were so many factors that played into it that, like, there was COVID, then there was injuries, and, okay, so we are we just going to take a sample size of what Ducharme did in the playoffs or are we going to look at the whole thing there's I, you, look at the whole you could you could you got you, you could even argue luke richardson like i don't want to lose him no i don't i don't want to lose him either i think no. you got to keep that coaching staff completely together i don't think you that would can, be yeah. great if they can do that I, that would be great and bouchard's gone so the backup plan's gone yeah Maybe Richardson. Yeah, that's the coach. other thing. Who do they bring in to coach Laval? Like, I don't want to lose that. The moment. Well, maybe I'm that's where Richardson is. Oh. What if Richardson? No, I want I want Richardson on the bench. What if he goes that's down? Wall would be a, get him in Laval to see the kids. Okay. Anyway, let me get my say here on this. Um, I disagree with you about they shouldn't remove the interim. I think that's fine. What I think they shouldn't do is sign them to a long-term deal. Like, I'd sign them two years, yeah. three at the most, so that uh, I'd go, if it doesn't I'd work go, out, I'd you know, you're not stuck. But I think I'd give them a two-year contract I, and, yeah, I can um, that. And, and call them head coach. And that way, you're not stuck in it long-term with them. Um, yeah, I think – but I, I think the interim tag's coming off for sure. Oh, I, I mean, I, it's obviously going to. How do you not go uh, – you go to the Stanley Cup final – you're going to keep your co coaching job. So, but that's just my my feeling. It was not like I I feel like it's an incomplete on the season. Yeah, no, I get it. Thing. I get it. But he earned the job for next year, so yeah, you take the interim tag, but you don't he sign him. He's the, he's the coach. Yeah, okay. but you don't lock him in for five years. No, I, I agree oh, with you, Rick. I think two years is fine. Yeah. I, that's what I'm comfortable with. And if two we'll years, how he does with a full regular season. If the two years go well, well, during that second year, you'll lock them in longer. Right. 
That's what I would do, personally. I'll, I want one last thing to talk about. One last thing. This picture that everyone's seen and everyone's seen different versions of it, and in each version you see, it gets worse. You all know what I'm going to show you, but what do you guys think of this? <laughs> we all know that this was an, a camera angle thing. Right, there's different angles of this shot, and it does not look as bad. So, I question is, is I think it's going to be here mostly for Jeff because Jeff might know would should know this actually. Jeff, um, with the goalie equipment, are they not once it's or checked. twice a year? It's checked once or twice a year, or once a month even. Right? They're measured. I'm, I'm not sure how often it's checked, but Bauer is not going to risk their I'm pretty sure that's who produces his cash protection. They're not going to risk their NHL license. They pay a lot of money to be able to, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, other companies, yeah. Um, and then on top of that, like, it's the difference. Some goalies don't want a big ball. Like, it, just because the rules say you can, it has to be this size or small. Right. Some goalies want the mobility. Like, my daughter yeah. wears a Warrior because it's, it's smaller, it's there's more mobility to it, but, and then there's the difference in, do you wear it tucked, untucked? It, Vasilevsky doesn't wear it tucked. Um, there was uh, Deming, I think it was, who played with him, said he, it's because it looks puffed up because it's, it's untucked, um, but it's preference. Like, right. Price could wear that same chest protector if he wanted to. Right. Yeah, that's the point, right? Right. Like, they're only allowed certain dimensions, and they're checked. They're checked for that. And the they're accurate. super checked on their pants, pads, yep. chest protectors, and gloves. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just want—I wanted to just to clear that up because I think like, a lot Price of could buy that chest protector. He could. Like, a lot of people have bought into that. That his pads, like I've seen the pictures where they show both Price and him. On the on their knees, pads out, and they're look. His pads are taller, but it's the angle of the camera that you. But that and it's also like the color of the pads too. Price like. has a big thigh rise on his pad too. Like, yeah, it's the same equipment because it's regulated. And right. and and besides that point, some goalies don't want the big thigh rise because they want the mobility. When you have a big thigh rise, when that pad's up there, it's in your way of movement. Some goalies like a shorter one. Some goalies like a longer one. It's it's all preference. It doesn't okay. matter. That's girls. Price like could that. wear. Price could wear the exact same gear as Vasilevsky's wearing. Shorter one and longer one, and get away with it and hate it or love it. Yeah, I'm ignoring you. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. I, the goalie the, the gear thing. Do you, I? I don't think Bauer who who. I'm pretty no. sure that's all his gears, Bauer, but it might not be. Some goalies wear different well, mixtures whatever of gear. company, they're not going to chance their license. They're not going to chance that license no. and, and the fine that comes along with it. And you're hard-pressed to find. I mean, all those guys, their gear's completely custom. Like, But it still has to meet the NHL It's still stats. regulated. And I do know that at least once a year, they are inspected. And oh, measure. Yeah. They do that. So I don't know how often, but I think they do it w once or twice a year as a minimum. So. But the different the, the <laughs> argument here is: uh, is his chest protector bigger? Maybe, probably. Like camera angles and all that. I, I'm not buying into that. The pro the different the, the the real argument is here. Price could wear something just like that if he wanted to. Right. Right. Now, the, to me, the question is: is, is it bigger? It, it might be, but is it regulation? That's all. Oh, I think it is. Yeah. It yeah, is. no, I would I would that, What has Vas Vasilevsky has proved over the last two or three years that he's definitely, if not the best goalie in the league, definitely the top in the top two of that conversation. Whether no you want to argue. It's not so his equipment. Is is he gonna it, does he really need a like a three quarters of an inch here and 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 some extra padding? No. <laughs> No, I, don't so I, think, want, I don't think he needs it. I just wanted to show that just to give our opinion on that, that yeah. that's not actually a thing, that his equipment was illegal. I don't think it was illegal. But it, no, I, I, I don't I, 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 won't, I, don't, I, don't I won't argue. I, if someone says it's bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, but that's not. What's no, bigger? 
No, but the argument was that it's illegal. That's why it's bigger, mm. but it's not. It's not what's happening there. So I just wanted to kind like, of... Uh, and no one's having the conversation. Well, maybe Price doesn't want to max out, max out gear right to the edge of the rules where Vasilevsky does. Right. No, exactly. Right. But okay. Price, uh, like you were saying, uh, I know Price, I think, gets his stuff from Warrior now. So, yeah. But like Price, you said... It's, it's, it's still all preference. Warrior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, warrior it's everybody, it's, it's their own preference. For them. Like Carrie oh, Price, yeah. Carey Price wears gaff skates, but they made it look like they were CCMs, but they were really gaffs. Like because he was sponsored by CCM, they didn't want his to, people to see that he wasn't wearing a CCM skate, so they kind of hid it and manipulated it so it looked like a CCM skate, but it was it was a gaff. All right, so we're gonna end it on this. Um, I want to thank. Um... My peeps here for uh, for joining. Oh, oh for no! Friends. This before you do that, Rick. The, the best part of the show is coming up. What? Me and Delaney are going to argue about and discuss the nineteen ninety World Series. <laughs> that's why. That's why we get dressed like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> nobody told, <laughs> nobody told me about it. Is the problem? We'll have to do that on another on another video. <laughs> Who cares about baseball? There's no baseball in hockey. Um, all right, I've been, so, uh, I've been told I should stick to baseball, so I'm they just should stick to hockey. Uh, <laughs> so thanks, you guys, Matt, Jeff, Delaney. I want to thank you for doing this video with me. Um, I want to thank brother. everybody out there for uh, for watching. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Leave any comments about anything, especially what Jeff said. Anything in the comment <laughs> section about anything that we said, uh, leave it in the comment section and um. Uh, yeah, subscribe, ring the notifications bell. If you're new to the channel, if you're a Habs fan like we are, and you want to see more Habs videos, um, yeah, so subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talking Habs. Thanks for watching, everybody. Really do appreciate it. I will be back uh, with a video soon. Um, I took a few days off after the season, so if anybody was wondering, that's what it was. I just took a few days off. Uh, so I'll back, be back with videos um, pretty regularly, and hopefully you guys will check that out. So thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Peace out, y'all, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Go Habs, go. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is... I don't even know what my name is. All right. Now we're... ...the number one Habs channel... Uh, catering to, I'm screwing it up, the Habs and Habs Nation. Okay, so before we get into that, please like, subscribe, ring that bell. That notify you of all my videos and screw-ups as they come out. Raising his game a notch. Uh, I gotta start this video anyway. Fuck, I forgot what I'm wearing. Hey everybody, oh, and it's time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hey everybody, uh, in this video, um, no. Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to tell you, I guess, um, when I can figure out what I'm going to say, then I can tell you. How's that? Hey everybody, oh, and it's time mm -hmm. uh -huh. to pre uh, preview of the game. Before we get to that, please like and subscribe, ring the bell, and this is horseshit, I'm going to do it again.